a couple of new lithium cells here. They're custom made from a guy called Paul from PowerPaul Australia. He makes these batteries himself. So we're going to talk to Paul, ask him about these batteries. This is Paul from PowerPaul Australia. So I'm going to put both of these batteries to the test. This is my Victron gear. I don't think I'll need to take a solar panel with me again because we're talking minimum 280 amps. So in fact, you actually will get more out of each of these batteries. Let's start off with, what's your background? Uh, electronics technician. It's been a hobby all my life. Just batteries, solar, power things in general, um, tinkering with all sorts of electronics from audio up to this sort of gear now. Powerball started about two years ago. What got you into building your own batteries? I could probably imagine the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for something that would uh, that would do the power for a 3000 watt inverter as a single battery and when I was looking there was nothing available uh, at least not in a reasonable price range so I decided that I'll make one myself. Um, and then other people wanted it so we're now we've found quite a few hundred other people want it 280 amps and basically not much bigger than a standard size battery case is it really yeah yeah it's bigger than the n70 um yeah but uh they're, they're still tightly packed in have they evolved a lot in the two years that you make a little bit um we're now under what we call v3 or version 3 which has got a few extra tweaks inside just just the way we build them and also an active balancer which in reality doesn't do a lot but mm. it's peace of mind for a lot of people that the cells are all perfectly balanced a lot of people i've noticed are actually connecting two of these scouts or the mercury's together which will give you either 660 amps or in this case what's it 560 is that right yep. thereabouts so you're always ongoing doing improvements looking yeah. for ways to improve and that's the thing every battery you build as well you actually quality check them individually and if one's not up to par not performing 100 percent at least more than what it's rated for you'll kind of you know pull that apart see what's going on and fix that so yeah. you're pretty well guaranteed guys that when you're purchasing one of these powerful australia batteries you are getting what you're paying for uh, like for example this one here which i'll show you shortly is 286 amps and we've got the mercury here which is 337 amps and you will get that these so, get run uh down to zero percent twice at yeah. least uh in our workshop so we we make sure that the numbers are the same for both tests yeah and that uh all the other parameters are right. The BMS is cutting off like it should do, both on charge, discharge. Uh, it's not getting too hot. Um, all the voltages look right. We monitor all that throughout the whole process. So we've got the scout and we've got the mercury. This one's been unpacked, as you can see. This one's still packed up. So when you, when you receive the batteries, they'll be all like this. They'll be all wrapped up and it'll have your invoice on the top here. And the batteries are supplied fully charged, aren't they? At the moment, yes. There might yeah. be some regulations changing that soon, but okay. currently we're doing full charge. We sell maybe four scouts to every Mercury. As you can see, I mean, one's 330 amps. You're looking at 280 amps. Now, you are going to pay more for this one here. There's a reason why, and we'll get to it later, but I want you to see the sizes. There's not a lot of difference in size here. It's probably 10, 10 mils higher, the width. Both sets the same battery box, just the lid a little bit higher on this one here. And we'll talk about that because it's got some interesting cells on this one that I don't know a great deal on it. Now it's great that Paul's here so he can give us the specs on this. Maybe we'll start with this cool little contraption here. You've got a, a battery capacity monitor just sitting right here with a, a button there. Yep. So, which is, looks interesting. That's not something you see on every battery out there. It's the first time I've seen anything like that. That's uh, the display is part of the Dally BMS or one of the accessories you get with it that I put okay. on all of my batteries at the moment. Yep. Um, it'll give you within 25% range 
from from zero to hundred percent on the display it also shows you if it's active if the Bluetooth module is active or not uh, whenever that's on you can connect to it via the app on your phone which we can show you later which is this one yeah um, it uh, also gives you the option to reset if there's a fault mode if you've over uh, current charged it or over current discharge mm. or if there's been something other strange go on you can use the button to reset the BMS and clear that fault code okay so yeah that's interesting let's get to that because I know for a fact with the iTech world battery I know he's going back to that guys because basically that's what I've got in the vehicle now so I'm comparing it to that I know with that if the uh, if you overcharge, over discharge or anything like that or it goes over a certain uh, uh, amperage etc, voltage etc the BMS shuts down and apparently it's a real pain to actually get it started up again it's never happened to me thank god <laughs> because apparently it's a real pain to wake that up so this one here if by any chance a miracle chance that I do overload it which I don't think I will not with your setup <laughs> how do you wake it up again well it's just a matter what just press that button is it yeah so if you find you're using it and the the app Let's has become non-responsive you just hold down the button for about five seconds the display will turn it off you wait about two or three seconds press the button again and that'll wake the display back up. So you and don't have to disconnect all the cables and remove the battery out of the car, etc. No, no it's, uh, with it's that a that battery I've got in the car, I read the instructions. You uh, you actually have to disconnect all the load off it, yeah. disconnect, <laughs> unplug it. You know, no. it's just oh, it's a bit of a nightmare. So I've been very cautious to make sure I've never had to do that. <laughs> yeah. So you should still have your main switch to yes. turn everything off. So. Yeah yeah so just in case um when i first saw this i thought oh that's interesting that must be a button to turn the battery on and off so that's not to switch on and off the battery that's just related to the built-in bms it turns the bluetooth on and off yeah as well um so when the display is off the bluetooth is also also inactive but the display will also activate itself whenever there's any charge or discharge activity so okay. it'll wake itself up if you're using it but if you're doing nothing for more than an hour and there's no charge or discharge happening it'll just go to sleep so what are they m8 or m10 uh, they're m8 so let's talk a bit about the internals the bms that you mentioned it's a dali yep. 250 bms which has been around for quite some time it's proven yeah they're a little bit agricultural in the way they do certain features yeah but, um, but they're well proven uh, and the balancing is where they're a little bit deficient but we've catered for that by an external balancer but the actual bms is the best one i've found for not getting hot every other one that i've tested gets really hot uh, it's the point where you can't touch them and that's not okay in a sealed case like these you've got the dali 250 bms the 250 means 250 amps continuous now i'll be able to get the full capacity out of my inverter whereas with the battery i've got now i cannot run one of my air fryers in there and it's the one that i particularly want to take with me when i'm camping because it's got the rotisserie etc and so on and that one draws around about depending depending on the batteries guys it'll draw anywhere from about 145 right up to as high as 170 amps now if you watched my videos on dan the Land Cruiser 200 where I did the test okay he was using one of these batteries so Dan's got this one the Scout he's got that one in his Land Cruiser 200 and he's got the same one in his Kedron Car Caravan I noticed on his vehicle that it was discharging a lot less amperage out of his battery which is the Scout than it was with mine so I asked Dan you know can we try this on mine and it was something like 20 30 amps the difference but then i noticed was the voltage the voltage this one was still sitting on i think it was 13.1 if um, i remember on the test when we recollection yeah yeah and mine was about 12.2 so almost one volt 
difference. Well, I mean, the yeah. amount of power you get out is the same, but if you reduce yeah. the voltage, you increase the amps. If we can keep the voltage higher, it's uh, just more efficient for the whole system. We were pushing 370 amps out of this battery. Now, it's not advisable. <laughs> <laughs> but right, short term yes but i'm not advising you to do that guys <laughs> if you've got two in parallel you'll have no problems with those yeah. sort of loads will you no in fact if you go to another youtube channel he's an installer he's based down in adelaide he's extreme auto caravan and camping it's worthwhile joining his youtube channel he uses paul's batteries if you have a look you see the sort of loads that he's pushing I mean, he's running off-grid air conditioners, hair dryers, microwave ovens, yep. induction cooktops, kettles, you name it, anything. All at the same time. Yeah. Not one at a time, all at the same time. And it's not overloading the battery at all because he's got two in parallel, which once you run two in parallel, does that mean then you'll get 500 amps continuous does yes. it work that way technically yes i know you've got a separate balancer yeah the balancer we're using them now they'll, they'll just keep the battery cells in themselves balanced all the time existing ones are, are balancing all the time the newer versions they trigger on at, at about 3.4 volts which okay. is a little bit better um, overall um, takes a little bit more setting up but that's on our end and for the customer's end you don't do anything okay that's interesting you'd have to make sure you set the charging perimeters correctly won't you yeah for these back 14.4 volts for your bulk charge and 13.8 for your float charge okay you can, that can vary a little bit according to the setup um it, that's that's user configurable really 14.4 is the magic it's even written on the battery it's it got is. a lot of here we are charge recommended 14.4 at 60 amps so that's charge rate that's what you recommend but yep. maximum is 14.6 150 amps at yep. 50 degrees celsius i'll be able to get the most out of my multi plus now because i can set it to charge i think it's 80 amps for your one, so i've yes. got the compact discharge minimum 10.4 volts 250 continuous even if you run it a continuous on a regular basis at 250 amps this battery is going to last a year <laughs> it'll outlast most people's ownership of their vehicle there's a lot of batteries being sold in this country that have inferior bms's in them as far as i'm concerned mm -hmm. their rated rating is very low and the advantage of these lithiums guys is not just their lightweight but their longevity how long they last so it's a long-term investment so why limit yourself on a battery that's not going to have the capacity potentially or not potentially 100 percent guaranteed that's not going to be suitable in say 10 years time you know, I reckon in 10 years time, this battery will still be running like the day it is right now. I expect it. It depends how you use it too, how it's stored, etc. and so on. But you'll be looking at least that 10 years. Now, yeah, there's a lot of use out there, and I've said this many times before, there's a lot of use out there that say, you know, oh, that's plenty for me, I'm only just running a fridge or, you know, LED lights. But what's the say in 10 years time? You're not going to be wanting to run an induction by then. It's a good chance you will be. Yep. Because it's getting very popular. 240 volt setups inside. Vehicle setup like this is getting very popular. But particularly in the caravans, guys. Particularly you guys in caravans. Now, I've seen some shockers. There's a lot of batteries that are supplied in some of these caravans. Uh, got no way they can handle the sort of load that people are running on them. I've seen on, what's it, Matt's, is it? Uh, yep. Is Matt's, Matt's for channel. About a month ago, I think, he had a video up, or it might be recent, where he had a caravan. My guess that caravan's probably from China, because I've seen, I've seen um, camper trailers from China with the same exact thing. When you parallel these together, you wanna make sure you're using really thick cables. 
because you've got a lot of load coming through here particularly if you're running your air con etc and so on so you want to connect it with thick cables a lot of caravans and camper trailers and I've come across it myself because uh, I've got a mate that recently bought a camper trailer that was made in China and he wanted some advice so I went around to his place it's not it's not far from here it's just around the corner and I went to his place and I looked at the battery and they had two batteries parallel together and it was connected in the batteries it's no no thicker than a pencil <laughs> I kid you not no thicker than a pencil and I noticed Matt came across that one of the caravans recently someone bought it in saying something's going wrong you know it's not working as it should and straight away he looked at it and he saw this thin cable connecting these two together so yeah this is, this is crazy guys so yeah be aware of that for connecting two together in parallel uh, making sure you think the cables well what would you recommend 50 mils is enough or 50 would... mils i know dan he went with 120 mil yes yeah he so went way overboard he, but, uh, he, that's great. but he he does use it <laughs> yeah because yeah. <laughs> it's so funny that video if you haven't seen it check it out <laughs> so now are you willing to sell what, what sort of sales you got in here yeah uh, uh currently we have eve uh lf280 cells Okay. They they had been the industry standard for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're going to be replaced soon with the LF two eighty Ks, just the newer version. Yep. No difference from the customer point of view, but from our different point, it's just a little bit different construction. I've heard of the Eve cells. As you know, I've actually have in the past looked into making my own batteries, and if I was going to make if I was going to make one myself, I was going to get the Eve cells for sure, hundred percent. I want to get back to the balancing. Starts balancing when each cell is at what was it? 3.2 volts. 3.4. 3.4 volts. Now, obviously, how long it takes to balance depends if it's out by how far it's out by. Yep. So, but I believe in if if by any miracle chance it's out a fair bit, it will balance fairly quick. Because what is it? One amp balance. It's Something? technically it's a 5 amp balancer, but oh, in most amps. cases we find it's up to about 1.8 amps. Okay. However, once the initial top balance is done, which we do when we build them, uh, there's there's very little chance of it going far out of balance. Every time you fully charge it, it'll just tweak that balance at that little bit extra. The battery still continues to balance itself, even if it's uh, stopped fully charging, even if it's uh, above 14.4 but your chart is not putting ah, current in okay. it'll continue to do its work with the absorption time would you set it around about two hours uh, same i as have that? mine set at two hours at the moment i'm still experimenting with the, the new system in the van okay that that would be fine there, there's there's no real critical number there i know with the agm that keeping them 100 percent charged as long as possible like having that trickle charge always you know when you're at home in the garage keep a charger plugged in them all the time you're going to get good life out of them i've got a kick-ass one here that's six years old still works fine and that's what i've done guys i've never taken out any more than about 30 40 percent maximum out of the battery and i've always had it always trickle charging whenever it's always parked at home but that's not necessarily ideal way to no with lithiums you shouldn't keep them on uh uh, just that topped up charge all yeah. the time. Once you've finished charging, stop the charging, let it sit there, do nothing. If you're going to um, just store it for a, a couple of weeks or even a couple of months, if you're going more than a, two or three months, then I would say drop them down to about half capacity and then you can disconnect all the loads, disconnect the charges and let it sit until you're ready to use it again. Okay, so there you go. That's some good advice for long term there to look after. Because I leave the fridge on all the time, guys. I never turn it off. Uh, since the day I bought it, it's on 100% all the time. So in my case, it's best if I just use the battery. Don't leave a charger plugged in. If it's just a few days between those times, then your fridge won't deplete this battery. No. It'll, uh, it'll recharge pretty quickly. Yeah, because we've got 280 amp hour battery in it. And I'm using a Red Arc uh, 50 amp charger, guys. So that's going to put 50 amps back into this battery when I'm driving. 
it's probably going to be pretty rare unless I you know don't drive anywhere for three four days or more it'll be rare that I'll need, ever need to charge this by AC again because <laughs> of the capacity let's put this one aside and let's talk about the mercury we tend not to use much packaging and we reuse as much as we can but yeah. just for a little bit of protection during my own freight I just wrap them in this pallet wrap just to keep them a bit neater close up of the two batteries so you've got the Scout here 280 amps as you can probably read there and here we have the Mercury our 330 amp hour one here now Paul just mentioned now as I was setting up the camera that you can actually use these on the angle yeah you can you can have it sitting on the end as it is here or you can lay it down flat to fit underneath drawers or under false floors this gives you some options awesome so basically all angles apart from obviously upside down not upside down <laughs> and, and not on the the bms end where the terminals are you always have those up up the top the bms is housed in this end of the battery um, so you can't actually sit it on this end if you're aware of victron energy which i'm sure you would be by now the victrons make their own batteries and they've got a 330 amp 12 volt battery and it's here in Australia it's something like $5,700 yep. for that battery and that's right it's got no BMS on it so, and then you have to pay extra anywhere from a couple hundred dollars right up to $1,700 for a BMS yeah. on top of that now the interesting thing is guys this battery here has cells similar they're the same Kelb brand cells that they use that they use on that $5,700 battery. Now this battery is, what is it? Is it half price or less than half it's, price? It's a little under 3,000. So this one's just a little, a little under 2,000 yep. Australian. And this one's a little under 3,000 Australian. This one here is equivalent to the $5,700 uh, Victron uh, battery. It's virtually identical cells, isn't it? Except this one here, you get a BMS with it. <laughs> so there's another further saving there. You're getting cells in here that are equivalent to a Victron battery worth $5,700. The Mercury is pretty much aimed at people that are really tight for space. If you want to put in the most energy storage in per space, then that's probably the one to go for, especially if you can only fit one battery. Um, other than that they're, they're almost identical but the cells are also a higher quality um, they are EV rated cells so you will get better cycle life out of them you will get more stable voltage which you'll test on your setup shortly the less work the battery's got to do to yep. to produce that same energy yes and that's one of the tests I wanted to do a compare these two now my inverter guys is a 1600 watt inverter and honestly i mean <laughs> these batteries will handle inverter probably close to twice that yeah so i'm going to be i'm actually looking into inver investing trying to get hold of a 3000 watt inverter guys so i can test these at the rated continuous 250 amps and then compare the difference in amps draw between one and the other you're mentioning the cells in this one it's actually got more cells in this than what this one here this has got four individual cells at 3.2 volts the scout that i'm showing right here well this one here has got it's got eight cells but it runs two in parallel and four in series so it it ends up uh Electrically it looks the same to the BMS, just to, just managing to pack in that little bit extra just because of the physical size of the cells. 28 kilos. And that one? 25. So, okay, not a lot of difference in weight there. Uh, 25, 28 kilos. Still lighter than my 
kick-ass 120 amp uh, AGM battery because I think that was 35 kilos they are so like and thereabouts when I last checked when you purchase your battery I notice you get these so you want to talk about this it's a pre-charge resistor yeah. Yeah, this is for uh, people who want to take that little bit extra care of the batteries and their inverters. You can pre-charge it, so it means when you connect your inverter, you usually see that spark when it's charging up its internal capacitors. This is an easy way to slowly charge it up. Um, that way, you avoid the the shock to it, basically. Okay. Um, it's it's not essential to do. Most inverters will handle without using it, but provide it just as insurance really the bigger the inverter the harsher it is I love to have a BMS with the Bluetooth app on it, it shows a, a percentage of charge personally myself I still recommend to use a decent shunt like I've got the Victron shunt mm -hmm. in my vehicle I know it's got battery temperature etc yep so you want to run through that and show us some of the details on there anything specific we should know I could see charge MOS, discharge MOS, balance, um, does that have any effect on this? No, the first screen here is purely for monitoring, you don't actually get any controls from this one. So charge MOS and discharge MOS, that's that's showing if, if you can charge a battery and if you can discharge a battery. If it's gone overcharge, uh, the charge MOS will, will turn off. If it's gone over discharge, the discharge will turn off. Same thing if you overload it, it will also turn them off balance indicator there is showing you when the BMS is balancing that's independent of the active balancer we've got balancing built into the Dali BMS yeah. that will not work have you bypassed or no, it will it, work it will work but it's a it's a very low it's very current. slow yeah so, yeah so it doesn't do a lot so what else have we got here I could see the maximum at each cells the average each cells the delta v that's the difference in voltage between each cell is there anything else there that we can um check it, on it's got fault alarms here now i get a question about this one fairly regularly when you reach full charge mm. it, it will actually show uh, a fault there but okay. it's a bit of a, a misnomer uh it it's not really a fault it's just one of the triggers that the BMS is used to decide that it's at 100% so if you see a, a fault or a warning there disregard that. It's got the charge cycles so yeah. that will work on that's full cycles so for yeah. example if I take 50 amps out of this and then another day I take another 50 amp out it and then another day I take up the less to, to make up that 280 amp then that means that's going to count as one charge cycle. Yeah. That's so right. it works like that. Okay, so that's, that's right. good. That's awesome, guys. That's that's good to know. That see, you've got active balance here. What's the this active is balance again? is yeah. not part of this particular battery. That's part of the Dali system, and we're not using that feature in this one. So disregard that, and you've got preferences in here. Yeah, these are preferences um, and charging parameters. Generally, you don't touch these at all. They will be used in any fault finding um, or any maybe some specific setups. Um, if the customers discussed it with me, I might suggest changing something in there. Cell characteristics. Again, you don't worry about all this. You've obviously set all this up yourself. Yeah, these are all set while we're we're programming it back in the workshop. Temp protection. It's using them uh, heavily when they're very cold is bad for them. Mm. Charge and discharge, especially charge. So I've got these set at minus five, but I recommend only to go down to zero. And if you're down at zero, then just be a little bit gentle on them until you warm it up a little bit. For most people down at zero degrees, it's not very common. So with these batteries, if it's comfortable for a human, it's comfortable for the battery. It's rare it's ever gonna get that cold inside the vehicle. No. But just in case I am, like if I'm going to snowy mountains or something like that, then you probably, I mean, would it still be able to run the induction cooktop, depending how? Yeah, yeah, you're very hard pressed to get inside a vehicle down to that temperature, unless you're not using the vehicle for days on end. Above zero, you're pretty well safe to use induction, etc. Yep. The All system right. settings page, this is the iPhone app as well, by the way. Uh, it's, it's, they look very slightly different for the Android one but essentially the functions are the same. 
Um, the charge switch and the discharge switch are things that you can use in day-to-day -day life as well. You just store your battery for uh, a while. If you're going to put the caravan away for a couple of months, you can actually use these buttons to uh, we'll just open that. You can use these to turn off the charge feature and to turn off the discharge feature. So, okay, and okay. <laughs> So now this battery won't accept any charge and it won't put any discharge out. All right. So if you know you're not going to use the vehicle or van for a, a couple of months, you can just turn everything off without having to unbolt anything or flick any switches off. Now state of charge, if you're not planning to use for like two months or longer, you suggest to uh, have your battery discharged down to 50% capacity. Is that About advisable? About halfway, yeah. About halfway? For, for several months. I mean, for a short time. Uh, for a couple of months, two, three months, then I wouldn't worry too much. And then when you come back, you just turn these on and Give charge it her up charge. and Bob's your uncle. Yep. So we can just turn both of these back on again yep. and that's ready to use. Does it have a, like a graph to show you a daily whatever, anything? Well, that's, no. that's where your Sobo GX has yeah. come into, into all that, etc. So. Yep. The good thing about the app is that if it, there is a a weird um, a weird quirk, something not charging, not running properly, most people can get a screenshot of the app, send that to me with a little blurb of, of what they're experiencing, and nine times out of ten, I can tell them within a few minutes what's probably the problem. You've got ongoing support, and etc. Yeah. Now, I probably should mention, guys, where where can you purchase these batteries from? So <laughs> I'll, I'll let Paul answer that. How the best way to contact? At the moment, we're working on a website. It'll be up soon. I don't know what soon is, but <laughs> soon. And uh, for now, we're just contacting you through the Facebook page. So you just search for PowerPool Australia. Send me a message. Tell me about how you want to use a battery, what vehicle or van it's going in, what charges you'll be using. Just so I get an idea of how it's being used to make it sure it's being used correctly and uh, if it's all good then uh, we can sell your battery. I know a lot of you, my YouTube channel followers have been asking of late what's a good battery. My second most popular YouTube video that I've ever filmed out of nearly the 450 videos that I've got is on which battery. I had a choice four batteries at the time which one to go through and I went through the specs etc and and that's my second most popular video that's watched even to this day every month I get more more views on that than most of the other videos and I get a lot of questions of late particularly of late what battery I'm going for what I recommend these are the ones because uh, value wise you're getting 280 amps with this and you're getting 330 amps with the mercury and to be honest for example the scout there's really not a lot of difference in price wise between a 200 amp and your 280 amp on yeah. some of the other in fact this one's probably even cheaper from some of them than, yeah. than a lot of the ones out there i don't know what sort of bms's they run in them uh, a lot of them don't even have bluetooth then i'm going to compare the bluetooth app on here the state of charge on how accurate it is against my victron system there so that's just going to be an interesting test so it'll be ongoing i'm going to check that and this is all going to be on future videos my victron gear the servo gx will record all that so i'll be able to put up a, a graph that'll show at different stages what the voltage is using the same load etc and that's going to be interesting it's probably not going to be hardly any difference between the two at 1600 watt voltage side wise or anything like that you really hold a um, little bit higher voltage it not, still not will much, but a little bit higher so that, that'll be interesting to see the difference in amp draws you're probably going to get a longer life out of the mercury 
Yes. Uh, both brilliant batteries. Y you won't go wrong with any of these. Expected lifetime 10 plus years out of them. So continuous discharge, 250 amps. It'll handle a lot more than that, as we found out on Dan's vehicle, although Paul doesn't recommend <laughs> no. that sort of loads. If you're going to do loads like that, you connect two of these in parallel. What if someone wants to buy it and make these into 24 volt system or 48 volt system? No go for these ones. However, we do a version of the Mercury, which is called the Cabin, which is a 24 volt, 160 amp battery. Oh, sweet. So we cater for the 24 volt market. But for vehicles set up like this, etc., these are perfect, just ideal for that, your camper vans, etc. If someone wants to put in their four wheel drive and go up to Cape York or or heading out to some ridiculous tracks that's got, you know, corrugations like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, they're, they're pretty tough. Um, they're, they're not built like a lead acid battery, the kids are thinner, so they're not for outside use, they're not for engine bay use. They, uh, they should be inside the vehicle, they should be dry, um, they should be uh, away from dust as much as possible, even though dust won't really get inside, but dust can be conductive sometimes, so watch that around electronics. Other than that, they handle things fine. They are supported inside, so so just under that lid, there's a there's a solid support. Well, I don't know if there's anything else. I think we've covered it all. That's if perfect. there's any questions, guys, ask down below. I'm sure Paul will be able to jump in, yep. and any technical questions, we'll be able to answer them. No. I think we covered just about right everything, haven't we? Whack it in the vehicle, give it a test. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give it a run. I think that's the next best thing to do guys is take out that iTech world and fit one of these in and then of course that's all going to be filmed as well. Thanks for driving all the way up here in beautiful sunny Queensland. Your warranty on these? Three year warranty at the moment. Sweet, that's a three years warranty and I'm sure if anyone still has a problem after three years you're still going to advise them will help out. Certainly if you're looking for a battery I recommend these batteries here. I'm going to be putting these to the test and see how they work in my system here and yeah I mean any questions as mentioned before ask below and we'll do the best to answer. Any that's too technical I'll, I'll forward them over to Paul and he'll get back to me. He could probably go on there and answer them himself if he wishes. There's no issues there whatsoever. So till next time mate eh? and keep tuned for the next videos to show this one in action inside my vehicle. So till then eh? Cheers. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>